Good. Okay. Wonderful. Anyone want to stand up and read this? Please. Okay. And your first name? Justine? Okay. Please, read, stand up and read, read it loud. Anyone tell me what this is from? Yes. Very good. Um, yeah. This is this is obviously from uh, Martin Luther King's uh, most famous "I Have a Dream" speech uh, in front of the the, uh, the Lincoln Memorial on uh, August 28, 1963. It was at the height of the civil rights movement and. You know, I, I, if you, if any of you aren't familiar with this, so please, I, I highly recommend going to YouTube and doing a search on this and, and watching the the video clip of the entire speech, which is really magnificent. Martin Luther King was was, uh, was you know perhaps the, the greatest orator, um, American orator, and this speech is, is will just blow you away. And uh, again, what I find really remarkable with uh, with the speech and with this passage in, in particular is how how there's there's a rhythm to it um, and uh, again I want to point out that that while there's some question as to whether he improvised some of the speech uh, it's pretty well documented that he had everything written down and memorized it beforehand so again just a, another example of, of the written word that I think is, is pretty fabulous. Uh, anyone want to help me with this one? Please. Come on, don't be in fashion. Want to help me? Please. Read it. No? Okay. Stand up. Do it. Read it loud. I decided to call it the speaker had mentioned connected. That would be important to them. I didn't call it the speaker. But he gave a sudden intimation that he was stretched out his arms towards the dark water in a curious way. As far as I was from him, I could have sworn he was struggling. The long parry I met to see words, and this thing was nothing except a single green light. A minute and far away, that might have been the end of the dolphin. Mm -hmm. When I looked once more for Gatsby, he had vanished, and I was alone again. Unclear, unquiet darkness. Thank you. Anyone tell me what this is from? The green Gatsby. Good. 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 Um, <laughs> Uh, if, if you're familiar with this this novel, um, I think this is a, a, a perfect example of. Uh, well, uh, l let me first say that this is written by. Anyone tell me? F. Scott Fitzgerald, and it's considered one of the, the greatest uh, American novels. It's certainly my favorite. And the entire novel is, is written from the point of view of, uh, of uh, the character Nick Carraway. Here he's talking about um, seeing Jay Gatsby, the, the great Gatsby, from from afar and, and watching him. And I think this is a, a wonderful metaphor here. If you're familiar with the novel at all, when Gatsby is reaching out and he's looking towards the, the green light, uh, minute and far away, um, while that is literally in the novel, uh, a light at the end of the dock or across the bay from him. What it really is, is it's a metaphor for uh, Gatsby reaching out to uh, Daisy Buchanan, his love, um, who, whose house is at the other end of the dock, and also the uh, elite society that Gatsby wanted to, to be a part of, uh, again, which is uh, across the, the way from him. Anyone want to read this? Come on, this is an easy one. Yes, stand up please and, and read it loud. 
Take a breath, take it deep, calm yourself, he says to me. If you play, you play for keeps, take a gun and count to three. I'm sweating now, moving slow, no time to think, my turn to go. Anyone know what this is from? Yeah. What's up? Bye. Very good. What's it from? Bear with me for just a second. I, I, I figured you guys would get this. Um, yeah, so the reason I, that I put this up is because, you know, I, I think sometimes we, we look at uh, our pop culture, uh, particularly music, and don't notice that, that there's uh, some wonderful writing there as well. I think this is, first of all, a wonderful song, but uh, it's a very interesting passage. Uh, any thoughts on, on what what this particular passage is about? And it's not about playing Russian roulette with a gun. What's it about? No, 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 no. It's about it's about putting yourself out, uh, being in love with someone, and putting yourself out there and taking the chance. The, the idea of Russian roulette is a metaphor for that. Um, anyway, uh, in addition to that, I, I think it's important to to just keep in mind that, that we take the written word here, and we have a, a singer like Rihanna who, who sings it which uh, takes it to a, a, another level of, of art form. And then, uh, I don't know if any of you saw her, her uh, performance of this particular song on Saturday, Saturday Night Live, but it was, it was amazing. Um, so again, we take the written word, we, we add someone singing to it, and then we add a performance to it, and it's really magical. Please, someone help me with this, reading it. Anyone, come on. Yes. You want to stand up and read it? Again? We use words like honor, code, loyalty. We use these words as the backbone of life spent defending something. We use them as a punchline. I have neither the time nor the inclination to explain myself to a man who rises and sleeps under the blanket of the very freedom I provide and questions the manner in which I provide it. I prefer you just said thank you and went on your way. Otherwise, I suggest you pick up a weapon and stand a post. Either way, I don't give them, I don't give a damn what you think you're entitled to. Good. Um, any idea what this is from? Very good. Was it? Very, very good. Yeah, um, this is uh, from the movie A Few Good Men from uh, 1992, uh, uh, some of you are obviously familiar with it. This is a very famous scene where Tom, uh, where Tom Cruise, Cruise says that uh, that he wants the truth and Jack Cruise comes back and says you can't handle the truth. Um, and, and I thought that, first of all, I, I, I like the, the passage. I think it's a wonderful dialogue for uh, you know, what is, I think, an okay movie, but with some really great scenes, one of them being the best. Uh, but I think more importantly, I think it's, it, it's important to point out that, that this, which A Few Good Men was written by Aaron Sorkin, who also is the creator of the Western, uh, if any of you watch that TV show. Uh, this started out as a play, a very famous play, which he received a lot of acclaim for, uh, and then it was turned into a screenplay, which was then turned into the movie. Uh, so here we have uh, a, a screenplay, and for those of you that don't know, virtually all movies are written down as a screenplay first, and that's what the, is, the movie is shot from. And this one. we have a romantic here. Anyone? <laughs> you want her, you're romantic? I'm romantic. Please read it for me. <laughs> How do I love thee? Let me count the ways. I love thee to death and the breadth and height my soul can reach when feeling out of sight. For the ends of being and I'll deal grace. I love thee. It's the love of every day's mass quiet need. By sun and candlelight. I love thee. Wait, 
I love thee freely, and men strive right. I love thee purely, and they turn 